Hi, this is Dr. David Heber again, and I'm here to talk to you today about how we classify different nutrients in our diet. And the, the way we look at them are by the amounts in the diet and their nature. So we have macronutrients. Those are protein, carbohydrate, and fat. They make up the largest part of our diet, uh, and they interact with each other in very interesting ways. So a high protein diet is often low in carbohydrate or uh, high in fat. They can be different. So we have to think about these three, protein, carbohydrate, and fat, as three different interacting substances. We'll talk more about that in the next lecture. The next group are micronutrients. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are naturally found in plant foods. You know, people in ancient uh, jungles did not have to take a vitamin pill every day. They just ate the little animals that lived in the forest because these animals were very low in fat. They concentrated all of the micronutrients from the soil, and I always thought of them as multivitamins with arms and legs because when they ate these little animals they got a lot of these trace minerals that we take for granted. Also when you eat dirt you get a lot of these things that are now found in vitamin pills. However, what micronutrients do is they provide the macronutrients with balance. So early on in agriculture when people had a very heavy grain diet they were deficient in certain vitamins. The most famous one of course is scurvy among sailors who sailed the ocean and were vitamin C deficient bleeding gums, they had all kinds of different system diseases. About 1750, they found out that if they'd eat citrus fruits, they could avoid the scurvy. It wasn't until 1932, when the structure of vitamin C was developed, that they now uh, talked about vitamin C being the cure to scurvy. And cer certainly small amounts of vitamin C will help prevent scurvy, but there are a lot of other things in citrus fruits that are beneficial, and those things are called phytonutrients. There are about 100,000 that have already been identified. There are 5,000 of the largest group called flavonoids, and these are found in all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Many of them have different functions. Many of them are antioxidants. Some of them are anti-inflammatory. Others have specific functions in specific cells in the body. So every, every government body talks about eating colorful fruits and vegetables, five servings a day. We're going to talk a lot more about those phytonutrients because it's one of my favorite topics. And we'll see you next time.